our tents a little bit farther back here. It's actually it's a nice little cabin. Beautiful area. Hopefully, uh, we'll find some moose later on. We heard a total of five shots and figured out they probably have taken that young bull. And uh, now it's dark and waiting for those guys to be, get back in. <laughs> to say it's snowing would be an understatement. Welcome to A Sportsman's Life. We're so glad you tuned in to join us for another exciting real world outdoor adventure right here on A Sportsman's Life. Made it to Vancouver, getting ready for the evening, and then tomorrow we'll fly out to Smithers and then get on a smaller bush type plane to go from Smithers, about 185 miles north of there, almost due east of Juneau, Alaska, if you look on a map. It's gonna be a fun hunt. You can see the mountains in the background, it's overcast, it's, it's cooler. It's gonna be a fun hunt. After two tries of trying to get into Smithers today, we finally made it here at the uh, Hudson Bay Prestige Hotel tonight. You can see the snow-covered hills in the background. Make that mountains. Going to try to catch the float plane tomorrow to get into camp this afternoon. Going to kick back just a little bit, have a good meal, get to bed early. Say a few prayers for uh, the coming week. More to come. Loading up the plane. Met the weight limit. a little bit farther back here. It's actually it's a nice little cabin. Beautiful area. Hopefully uh, we'll find some moose later on. Our first real day in camp. Got in yesterday and hunted a little bit yesterday afternoon. Got caught in the snow last night. It snowed a lot. It slowed throughout the night. We probably got about eight inches of snow. Got out this morning and there was a lot of snow everywhere and deep snow. And as the day wore on, the snow pretty much left again. Have not seen anything yet, but uh, unbelievably beautiful country seeing it in the snow and then without the snow and don't know what the next few days are going to bring but uh we've been doing some calling and uh 
I hadn't responded, but there's no question there's some moose here. They saw some moose back up here on the hill. But it was a young bull and a couple of cows. Uh, in the past, they've had real good luck. Now they haven't hunted here for a while, the last couple of years or so, and giving these moose an opportunity to mature a little bit. But uh, I got a really good feeling. There are four of us, as everybody knows, Bill Brown and Jeff Johnson and John McClellan, who I'm hunting with. And John and I go back many years to uh, time when I was, we were both the Thompson Center Arms a long time ago, so I'm having a great time just visiting with him. Uh, we'll try to keep you up to date as we go on. First day, not anything, a lot of snow, and a great afternoon, and just kind of sitting and watching and listening to uh, occasional calling from uh, from Jared, uh, Jared Morrison, I think it is, and uh, uh, go back to the same hill in the morning, kind of like hunting brown bear. You just sit there and watch for a long time. I kind of think that's going on. We're going to be done here. But uh, first day in the in the books, no moose, but uh, great times. Brought to you by Dallas Safari Club, conservation, education, and hunter advocacy. Hornaday, accurate, deadly, dependable. Taurus Firearms, maker of the Raging Hunter. Stealth Vision, high-tech precision-driven equipment tailored for the modern hunter. third day I started off by cutting my finger with my knife pulling my britches up my knife had come out a little bit and cut it and of course it bled forever headed this morning and kind of where we've been hunting but a little bit farther up the creek getting out of the boat uh, I ended up catching my leg and and uh, kind of fell in the water but the other thing about the water was is also left my video camera sitting where I didn't think there was going to be any water and there was more water in the boat and Literally kind of fried my my video camera, so we're down to my regular camera and my little phone right now trying to record whatever's going to be going on. Got out this afternoon, and as right before we left, we found a cow moose in, uh, with a sow grizzly in a, in a cub not very far, and they kind of we kind of watched those for a while, and then finally got back off the back, and this afternoon saw a, a black bear as well, too. So great hopes for tomorrow. I thought I might show you our little cabin that we're staying in. My partner for the hunt is Jeff Johnson. I'm hunting with uh, John McClellan, but uh, Jeff and I are staying in this little cabin right here and very comfortable. Finally figured out the wood stove, which you can see right there. And uh, they had all kind of little fancy deals that we weren't aware of, so we had a lot of smoke in here to start with. But uh, not a real big cabin, but it serves the purpose.
<laughs> day four got cold. It's really been chilly today. I've had a north breeze blow in and sitting here right after breakfast and then the guy spotted again the cow and the calf across the lake. But the young bull's been there as well too. So Christoph, who's originally from Australia, I'm sorry, from Austria, and uh, Jeff and Bill decided to go for a hike a little bit later here about time that we got set up where we were going to be hunting and where, where we've been hunting. We heard a total of five shots and figured out they probably had taken that young bull. And uh, now it's dark and waiting for those guys to be, get back in and we'll try to get their story a little bit later. But it uh, sounded like we finally got a bull down and sometimes that just breaks the ice and once the ice is broken, then others start to follow. Just kind of scoot, scooted over, got, got in front of Kristoff and uh, just waited, waited for that bull. We weren't even calling, right? No, we didn't just, call. Just because I'm saying he's going to follow the yeah. follow the cow. Yeah, he always followed the cow. And uh, that's what he did. So 300 bull. Came out of 300, yeah. So downhill, eh? Straight. Oh, uh, yeah. It was. <laughs> it was. Uh, it was straight downhill, but we got him. Uh, got him done. Yeah. Yeah. It's fantastic. Good deal. Yeah. That, that was, was a great hunt. A lot of fun. John, the guys are going to go up to the river. Just a little bit too much weight when I get in there. Set so tomorrow after he kills his moose today. If I don't kill one here at, the, at camp, I'll go back up in there. Good luck. Bye, Larry. Once again, it is snowing. John McClellan is out today. They're running the river. Uh, the boat just was not big enough for four of us to go because both guys are going as well too and so we've got the cough here but uh they'll be uh i'll be out there tomorrow hopefully john will kill one today and i get to sit here and camp and watch it snow and visit with uh with jeff johnson for a while some of the other guys here Day five, John and I and Jared went up to the uh, far end of the lake this morning, sat there for a long, long time, and, and uh, actually did not see much anything. Got to see some cool-looking birds. We've been seeing things like bald eagles and rough-legged hawks and saw a king common kingfisher and some scoters and, of course, some loons and that kind of thing. But... Uh, while we're there, we heard a shot and uh, we wondered what was going on. One shot as it worked out. And it just happened to be that uh, <laughs> my roommate, actually, Jeff Johnson, ended up taking an outstanding bull. A uh, little bit more about him a little bit later on in the show here. So, uh, but the, getting ready to go out this afternoon and, and we've got two for four. Uh, John and I are the only two that have not taken a moose. Hopefully we'll be able to see something this afternoon. And if not, we got a few more days left. A Sportsman's Life is also brought to you by Mossberg, American Built, American Strong. The Wyo Steakhouse, Catch and Release Apparel, AGM Global Vision, your go-to for thermal hunting scopes and spotters. Pyramid Air, your one-stop shop for everything air guns. Hello sports fans, it's Bill, the old man at Striper Express, with your fishing tip this week on A Sportsman's Life. As you can see, we're out on the water. And look what I got. My favorite all-time topwater plug, the Cordell Pencil Popper in bone. That's, that's my favorite. Now, I've been showing y'all for a couple years on how to do this. But you go ahead and reel it up. About six inches from the rod, grab your line, open your bail, like on the clock. Ten o'clock, two o'clock. Don't try and throw it over the moon, just get it out there. Now, close it with your hand. Watch my hands. Pop, reel, pop, reel, pop, reel, pop, reel, pop, reel. I never quit popping. Now, 
go ahead and film the plug and we'll show it that way. Okay, watch, see? It's just erratic retrieve. And remember, when that fish hits, do not set that hook until you feel it pull back. You know what I say? It comes back quicker than it went out. Incoming rounds. So do not set that hook until you feel that fish pull back. So there you go, boys and girls. That's your fishing tip this week on a Sportsman's Life. Go catch a fish. A special thanks to these fine sponsors, Vineyard Max Deer Products, and the Anchor Inn and Marina on beautiful Lake Tawakini, one hour east of Dallas. Mr. Jeff Johnson with his first, I assume it's going to be his first one, moose. My last. <laughs> Your last? <laughs> Most of these picked bulls I've seen from here don't have real big brow times. Well, say what you will, they've been giving y'all a hard time. I got in his ass second ago about the Mossberg, but you know where I was aiming? Exactly there. Exactly there. <laughs> right there. That was pretty cool to see that thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, 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 well. On, that, on that video, it looked like the shot went a little high or something. I thought it was high, yeah. 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 But no, and I was a little surprised because I was aiming just square in the biggest part of the shoulder. Guess what? Got two days left, and I decided to stay in camp this afternoon after uh, a beautiful sunlight, full sunlight this morning. And now it's such that it's snowing so hard. It started raining hard, now it's snowing hard. But you can't hardly see, and you can't see across the lake over here. So my staying in this afternoon and visiting with, with Ron and Brenda, I think it's paying off. Absolutely beautiful winter wonderland. Sometimes when you're in moose camp, you just gotta sit back and relax and sit around the fire and watch it snow. <laughs> to say it's snowing would be an understatement. Started snowing sometime during the night, and particularly this morning, been snowing all day. Yesterday, we were able to uh, spot a moose across the way, and actually a little moose, but uh, about like the one that Bill Brown killed, but also a couple of different grizzlies that have shown up. Didn't report a whole lot yesterday, but uh, spent most of the time in the cabin because the it got really nasty, and right now, it is probably about six or eight inches of snow that's fallen, and continues to fall, and will be interesting to see whether we get out of here on time or not. Uh, we've got one more hunting day left. Uh, essentially, all I'm doing is sitting here in camp, and we've got one guide and one hunter out. John's out with the Jared, so uh, there's no need to be two of us out there sitting out in the snow. And you, it, I want John to shoot a moose before I do anyway, so we'll see how this all ends up. But uh, what a fun hunt. Christoph, what are you doing here? I'm not figuring. Well, we're cooking up some flat irons here. Looking out there. Nice little... Still no taste of the game. Still no moose. Might as well enjoy life here at uh, hunting camp at Moose Camp. Hey, Tell me about the flat iron steak. Flat iron steak. It is next to the tenderloin, the most tender steak up there. And where does it come from? It comes from the shoulder. It comes from the scapula. Your scapula. The scapula. Is it the meat closest to the bone or farthest away? Closest to the bone. It doesn't get used at all. That's why it's so tender. Now we got a little hunk of something here. A little hunk of something else there? No, it's flat iron, but oh, yeah. cut off in. Come back here a little bit to let you show me how you do this on the stove or in the stove. Mm. Now what do you do? I'm seasoning the pan with some garlic. <laughs> so it gives it a good flavor. Garlic is man's best friend in cooking. I will not argue with you one bit. We've got some bacon grease in there. Oh, could be a Brenda. Bacon and... A little bit of garlic, that's good for any and everything. Mm.
Oh, I love hearing that fiddle right there. Mm -hmm. Lordy. What season do you got on? You just got salt and pepper on there. Yeah, salt and pepper. Keep it simple. These don't need much. Are you doing two minutes per side, something like that? A minute. That's about it. A minute per side? A minute per side. Finally back home from a hunt up in the uh, far northern reaches of British Columbia with Love Brothers and Lee. Fabulous hunt, even though I did not even hardly ever load my gun, other than to shoot it in to make sure it was shooting where I wanted to in case I did see a moose. Regardless, had an absolutely fantastic time. The success of a hunt isn't always measured by what you bring home. Now, back home, it's time to get after whitetails. More about those in upcoming episodes right here on The Sportsman's Life. Folks, this segment was brought to us by Gearhead Archery, Smoke Intex Electric Smokers, Snaplock Hunting Blinds, Y.O. Ranch Headquarters, Ultramatic Feeders, and Catfish Pro. Tune in next week for some more real-world outdoor adventures right here on A Sportsman's Life.